Good afternoon to one and all. Validation is 
nothing but a dynamic process. The basic thing is what? Just now we have covered. Verification means the static method where we will confirm the things what customer is saying, what we have built in the designing phase. In validation means we will sure that yes, whatever I built is correct or not. That process we are calling as a part of validation model. Next, we will focus on the second term called as one levels of testing. Now, levels of testing means basically we are going to see the four levels. First is called as one unit testing, second is called as one integration testing, third is called as one system testing, and fourth is called as one user acceptance testing, normally known as acceptance testing. These are the four different levels we will predominantly focus on this chapter. And apart from these four levels, we will study simultaneously different types of a testing. Starting from our first phase analysis to the first call level deployment. In each level, what the different flavors of a testing is, we are going to see. Starting from the first as a proposal testing, second as a requirement testing, third as a design testing, fourth as a review testing, that is code review, fourth as a unit testing, module testing, integration testing, then big bang testing, again the same approach in different names. Next is sandwich testing. Apart from this, once the system is ready, we will going to apply the system testing. Then apart from this, once the system is ready, before making sure to deliver it to the customers, we will try to check graphical user interface testing, called as what GUI testing, then compatibility testing, security testing, performance testing, and many more. So let's start with the basic idea on this one. What we are going to see as a part of our testing scenario. <clears throat> as I rightly said, the levels of testing focusing on the four different parts. One is what is what unit testing, second is what is what integration testing, third is what is what system testing, fourth is what is what acceptance testing. Now to understand this, we will take one more example. Example is very simple one. And the example is, suppose you are developing a software called as a calculator. You are planning to develop a software calculator. And you are planning to develop this software for banking purpose. Your domain is bank. So, what will be the different requirements? Requirements are very simple. To complete the calculator for bank, we just need to focus on the four functional requirements. What are the four functional requirements? Addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. These are the four models which makes a system. Which system? Calculator. For a domain called as one, bank. So, we need to just complete these four requirements. Addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So, to understand this, levels of testing, is what we will take with the same example. Suppose your team A, member A of team is work on addition model and said the same thing there is one more person called as B who is working on the second model called as what? Subtraction. So model A addition is developed by team member A. So before developing means this, the scenario and under over into the next level, A should change whether addition is, addition model is absolutely working as per the expectations or not. Means the testing part carried out at the basic levels, that is what we are calling a unit test. We are just trying to implement the testing process at the lowest level. That lowest level means related to that individual part. We are calling it as what? Unit testing. Just like I said, this thing made up of different different parts. If I consider this as a cap, I am calling it as a unit. This part is developed by someone else. And the one who has developed has to make sure that this part is as per user expectations or not. This is what we are calling as the first level unit testing. This part is clear. Once you deal with the unit testing in normal scenario in software industries, units are developed in parallel scenarios. When if A is working on addition, 
B is working on substration, C person is working on multiplication, and D person is working on division of body. Simultaneously, work is in progress. So, what now? My next concept is if the things are going to get parallel, I need to club their work together. Means the one who has developed addition model has to communicate with the person B. And whatever the communication is going to take place for integration of the two models means I'm going to combine now two models together for my testing purpose. Means I will just simply go with addition model. Addition model result is okay. Now I'll check with subtraction model for unit testing. Both models are okay. Indeed means what? Independently, both the models are working properly. Now my intention is what? Just to combine these two models and perform a testing. That testing we are calling as a second level integration testing. Try to understand what I am saying. Integration testing is nothing but what? It's a second level of a testing. Means after the completion of your unit testing, once you sure that all the units are tested properly, all the units are working independently, as per the user expectations, your unit testing part is done. Now you will move to the next level. That level is called as what? Integration testing. In integration testing, what you are going to do? We'll start with one module. We'll start with one module. Then we'll go for the next module. We will combine these two models. Means now I will combine this addition plus subtractions together for purpose of testing. That testing concept is called as what? Integration testing. When two different units you are combining and you are performing testing, we are calling as integration testing. This part is clear? Okay. So now my question means the things comes in the mind is that from which model you are going to start integration? According to that, we have different different levels of integration testing. Means in case of integration testing, we can start either with top model or we can start with bottom model. Or we can start with the combination of both quantum and big bang. See what I am saying? In case of integration testing, what you are going to do? You are simply going to add the different models. To add the models, either you can start with the bottom model or you can start with the top model. According to that, we have different types of testing in the integration scenario. One is called as a top to bottom approach or second is called as bottom to top approach. Or sometimes we are going to use the combination of both called as one big bang approach. In details, we will discuss in upcoming slides. So just try to remember, integration testing is nothing but type of a testing where two different units we are combining together and we are performing a testing called as what? Integration testing. We will repeat this process till the end of all models of the systems are combined or not. That scenario we are calling as what? Integration testing. So just quickly revise. What is unit testing? Unit testing is very simple one. The units which are working independently, just small parts of the systems, we are kept together. Means we are kept separate from the entire systems. We will check the inputs, we will check the outputs. If their working is okay, we say that our module is ready, our unit is ready. Now, repeat the same process for all the rest of the units. Now, we are trying to combine the units and performing the testing. We are calling it for integration testing. Now, let's move to the next scenario. Next level of the testing called as what? System testing. System testing is nothing but incremental integration testing. See what I am saying? System testing is nothing but it is just incremental integration testing. Unless and until your system is not built. System is what you are calculated. Calculator is made up of four models. Addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Means what you are going to do? We will combine addition, subtraction. Once test results are okay, we will add one more model called as what? Multiplication. We will add one more model called as what? Division. In this way, we have completed our entire system. So we will make sure
sure that my system is now okay. We are calling it as simply system testing. Now, what is the difference between integration testing and system testing? In integration testing, each repetition, each iterative, you are going to add one module. In system testing, your entire system is ready. What you need to just you need to confirm the two important things. The first is Whatever the system models you say, all system models are present in the system or not. Like if I am saying that, I am talking about the calculator. So calculator means having whether four models or not. What are the four models? Addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. If all the four models are present, I will say that my system is ready. This is the first outcome of your system. Second outcome of your system testing is that all four models of the systems working properly. I am calling that my system testing is that. Maybe in times of your big bang approach, we are calling it this system. That's why I say incremental integration testing. This part is clear. Now we focus to the next level of the testing called as acceptance testing. As the name suggests, acceptance testing means once you are sure about your system testing means your system is now ready, you are about to launch this system to the user's perspective. So before going to deliver the system to the user, user wants to make some type of a testing called as what? Acceptance testing. So let's focus that your system is ready means you are at company side. Maybe I am saying as an organization where you have developed the system so far called as calculator and you are about to hand over this product, about to hand over this system to a bank, for example, HDFC bank. So the people from the HDFC bank, before accepting this product, want to check and confirm whether the system which you built is their expectations or not. Making confirmations called as what? Acceptance testing. I repeat what I am saying. You have built a calculator system software for a purpose called as what? Bank. And people from the bank side coming to your organizations before accepting the final product, they check whether the system you built is their expectations or not. That process we are calling as acceptance testing. And who is going to perform this? User. So we are calling it user acceptance testing. Is it clear? So user can perform this testing in two scenarios. The one scenario is one user coming to the organization level and perform the testing. We are calling it as alpha testing. It might be the case that person from the organization where the software is ready will lead towards customer side and will go there and will install the software and customer side will install the software at customer side and will give the demo to the customer where at customer side means location where customer is going to use the software we will call it one data which is a sub type of acceptance testing so what we said so far acceptance testing means before accepting the product user has to means anyone has to make sure that Whatever I say is going to get delivered to me or not. That called as what? Acceptance testing. With reference to this, we have two scenarios. Whether user is performing the testing at company side, we will call it as what? Alpha testing. Whether the people from organization side, means the company who has developed the software, taking the software, coming towards customer side, installing software there, and showing demos to the end user, showing demos to the customer means the testing is performed at customer side. We are calling it what? Beta testing as a part of acceptance testing. Sometimes it may be the case that combination of alpha testing plus beta testing is used, we call this what? Gamma testing. Getting what I say? There are these four basic levels of testing that we are calling as what? 
unit testing, integration testing, system testing and acceptance testing. This part is clear, hopefully. Now we will move towards the next part. What is what? Different things. Apart from this, what are the different types of testing? While we were discussing about the integration testing, we said that it comes with the two scenarios. The first is the part called as what top down strategy, second is called as what bottom up strategy, where we need to focus on individual models. Means I can build the system starting with the base model, or I can start the system starting with its top model. So the approach will be a different. According to that, we'll get different, different results. With each process having their own advantages and own disadvantages. That we will discuss in detail in upcoming slides. Now let's move towards the next part called as what? The scenario where we will focus on different types of testing. So the different types of testing starting apart from this, the first is called as what? Scenario that where we will focus at the system testing. Now I said what is the system testing means? Making sure that your all models are present in the system or not. The basic idea is clear. But when I am talking about the basic idea, this when I am talking about the completion about my system testing, I need to take care about various dimensions. So what are the dimensions? If we say, we can say that the dimensions are get considered with the simple scenario. And the simple scenario about the system testing is F-U-R-P-S-S. See what I am talking? Where I will focus on the word, term called as what? System testing means sure that your entire system, entire software, entire system is ready. Is ready means what I can say to measure this I need to focus on, the, on different types of testing. That different types of testing I will simply remember in one single word and that single word is F-U-R-P-S-S. Which stands for functionality testing, usability testing, reliability testing, performance testing, supportability testing, and security testing. What I am saying, my system is ready. Where I have performed unit testing, where I have performed my integration testing, everything is okay. By incremental integration testing approach, I have done my system is ready. As soon as my system is ready, I sure that all the systems, whatever I expected, are present in the system. Means, if I say my system is calculator, I mean addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Everything is ready. Now, moving towards the next level, acceptance testing. I need to make sure for additional points, what that additional point is, F-U-R-P-S-S, which are nothing but different types of testing, as the title of the subject is what we say, levels of the testing and different types of testing. So let's pay attention on different types of testing, for the functionality testing, usability, reliability, performance, supportability and security testing. So what does mean functionality testing? We will discuss in detail, basically called as what? The simplest idea. represented in single slide. So the name suggests functionality means how your system is going to get operated. Operate means operability we are going to measure in terms of functionality. So if I say rightly, a calculator is wired in my system and I need to check the functionality it means if I select the model addition and example is 5 plus 4, whether I am getting the result exactly as 9 or I am getting the result as 8.9 or 9.1 This both answers will be wrong How accurate my system is working This is what I am going to check as a part of my functionality test Second part I am focusing about It is usability Usability as the name suggests How the software is user friendly User friendly means what we can say Considering the scenarios if you are going to provide the software in expected means user extended language or not. Suppose your intended user is a senior citizen person who 
who is not too much familiar about the English language and you are about to deliver the product in only English language means your software is not so much user friendly. We need to take consideration about the average age of the users, the average usability about the systems, making them available in local language like this. So usability is nothing but trying key efforts to that you have all intended users can easily use the systems. Third part is what about reliability. Reliability as the name suggests, reliability means simply we will remember it with one word, what is what? Availability. Reliability, what I am saying? Reliability directly proportional to the word, what is what? Availability. So just pay attention to what I am saying here. Reliability is directly proportional to availability. How it comes directly proportional to an availability? Reliability means whenever I want to use whether your system is available or not. See what I am saying? Reliability means making sure that whenever you are about to use the system, your system is ready to use or not. That's why I say reliability directly proportional to availability. Now to understand this, we shall say that your system must be failure free. Failure free means should not be problems. If there is no problems means you can use your system. You can use your system means system is available for user whenever it is intended. So this is what directly proportional to availability. Let's take a simple example about the ATM machine. I want to use the ATM machines. I have the ATM card and I want to use that ATM machines. But unfortunately, I am getting a message running out of the service. Means that machine is not available for me right now. Which is not allowing to perform my intended task. Means availability is zero. It means the reliability is these are directly proportional to each other. Now let's move to this one more example called as what? Performance. Performance means every times you are going to use. If we consider their in terms of uses and all the parts, we will check their performance. Simplest scenario. If we take an example of our website, university websites, normal users are very less. If someone, if you got a message that your result is declared on website, so what does suddenly all the users want to access the same websites? Earlier there was very less interactions, but suddenly interactions to a specific website has increased with a lot of numbers. And what happens? Intended results. Whenever you try to use that page, you are getting message going on, going on, going on. It means the response time of that website is decreasing because of number of users increased suddenly. Means performance is a degrade. If this comes into the situations, your software will be not used so far. So, as a tester, our responsibility is irrespective of number of users, the system performance should remain constant. So we have to make sure that whatever the systems we are going to develop having the equal performance on the same time irrespective of their location, irrespective of their number of users and all the parts. This is what we are talking about the performance. Next is what we are talking about supportability. Supportability means we we'll continue with the same example of ATM machines. Earlier, if I am ATM card having from a state bank of India, I supposed to use only with the ATM machines of SBI. But what happened? Suddenly, RBI has made a new regulations that irrespective of your service provider, you can use the ATM machine. Means now I can use the same ATM card to draw or to take a money from HDFC banks. It supports usability features. Means irrespective of underlying wealth, whether you are going to use it or not, we 
equal simply as a part of your support template. But take one more example, I am developing a software called as a website which I am going to use frequently on a browser called as a NetSurf Navigator. But unfortunately I am facing a problem with NetSurf Navigator and I need to move to one more browser called as Internet Explorer version 7. Whether it supports to it or not, checking that part called as what support. Hardware supportability, software supportability and underlying operating system supportability. We need to take into consideration whenever we are going to install the software. So this is what the basic idea about the So once your system is ready, once your product is ready, make sure that it supports all few are PSS. Means you have done with your system. Basic idea is clear. Where we need to make sure that all the systems are ready, means all the models of the systems are functioning properly, everything is without patching about the performance issues, without facing the problems of supportability, without facing the problems of reliability and all the parts. And at the same time, we need to make sure about one more S, that S is for the one security. So this S what is what? Security. Security means we are going to provide this access. You are going to give the access to the systems. Means depending on your authentication, authorization and privileges, we need to provide the intentions of the intended users for security about the system. Means as a user, you need to provide that user agent password. So based on their authentication, what are the things you are going to allow to the users to access to the system will be get decided. If they are not being strictly followed, means it is you are breaking the rules of authorization process. And if you face problems with authorization, indirectly you are facing the problems to your system's privileges. Means you have to make sure, you have to confirm that intended users are only allowed them to provide access to the systems or not. We are calling it as simply as a part of your security testing. So this is the basic idea about the system testing. Apart from this, apart from this, we need to focus few more testing parts where we need to come about the different types of testing. In detail, we will discuss in upcoming slides. So, what we discussed so far, different levels of the testing, where we have started with unit testing, integration testing, system testing and acceptance testing. Now, after this integration testing, we have started with the second scenario called as what? System testing. Making sure that the system is ready. Means what? We need to focus on these five words. Five words. What are that? Functionality, usability, reliability, performance, supportability and security testing. Once we deal with this, now we will move towards the next little bit interesting part called as what? Different types of testing. So these are the basic ways where in which we are going to build about the systems. As you are aware, this testing work directly proportional to the term called as what? Quality. The moment you increase efforts in testing, automatically quality of a product is going to get increased. What I am saying? The level you are increasing in the testing, the efforts applied into the testing, if you increase directly your quality of a product is going to get increased. Means maximum testing, you will get maximum what we can say quality in your product. So these are again basic different types of testing that we will discuss in our coming slide. <coughs> This is what the basic things under the title of software testing. As we are aware about the different phases of the software life cycle, the first phase where we discuss as a part of analysis. Next we have focus on the design. Next we have focus about the coding. And parallelly, never ending things. Calling about Testing phase. <coughs> Unless and until you know aware about this, you cannot focus on the testing scenarios. This analysis phase.
SRS, outcome of the analysis phase is SRS, what is what? In software requirement specification. Outcome of this design phase, low level design and low level design. Outcome of this coding phase, directed .exe files, which we can execute and by giving the input, we can observe the output. We are calling it as what? SQ phase. Where we will give this .exe files. So, when I am talking about the analysis phase, as the outcome of the analysis phase is SRS, where we will check it out, it's a proposal. We are working on a simple model called as what? Verification and validation model. The once you complete your analysis phase, means you will complete your proposal testing and requirement review testing. The two first levels, proposal testing and <coughs> review techniques where we have sure about whatever we are going to build is accepted or not what is what? requirement testing here user has given you his expectations which you have converted as requirements and after the requirements we are sure what you are going to give to the Customers, we are simply calling as a part of proposal testing and requirement testing. The first part after completion of your analysis phase. Once you are done with this, we need to focus on the next phase called as what? Design testing. As I already mentioned, design testing means what? Whatever the models you got, we just need to make sure with reference to your proposal testing, with reference to your requirement testing. This is what the simplest idea that diagrams are with you. We just need to make one more time review means one more time interaction with the users and confirm yes this is what the system I was looking for. We will call it as what? Design testing. Once you done with the design testing we will focus on the next part called as what? Code standards means we will make sure it's a two parts means the first focusing on debugging part unless once your coding part is done you have written the syntax logical part is done your business part business logic part has been done everything is get implemented over there your business part is what we can see your business logical part is get decided into the two styles itself first as a part of your proposal testing and second part as a designing testing means you are fixed with your business logic now what is the concept of business logic means the rules and regulations we simply call nothing but prototypes are they fixed here means what I am saying suppose you are developing a software to measure the blood pressure you are planning to develop a software through that software you are going to measure the blood pressure so to measure the blood pressures we will use a different technique but whatever the values comes you need to declare the results so normal pressures for the blood the range is systolic and diastolic 80 120 these are the standard values if it goes below this and if it goes upward apart from this, we say patient is facing the problems. If it remains below 80, we say systolic patients. And if it is above 120, diastolic patients. Lower BP patients, higher BP patients. This is what the logic you say over there as a part of business. To understand whether this doctor decides whether this is a patient of which type low BP patient or high BP patient so to understand this they set the rule they set the prototype so similarly in case of your requirement testing and proposal testing apart from the design testing you fix prototype for your business and whatever the rules and regulations you set over there whether it is get reflected into your code or not that will be get tested as a part of your testing scenario we are calling it as one code testing to perform this code testing
characteristic, the one who has developed that body means the simply what we can say, it again leading to an levels, the different levels and the different levels we are measured in the simplest parts logical parts, what I have written as the outcome of my two process that is proposal then next is requirement testing then low level designing, high level design testing I will move towards the next part where I will perform the code testing. This code testing is nothing but your unit testing. And the one who has written that particular code performs this. So we categorize them as a simply white box testing. Hear what I say? And once your code testing is ready, means your individual unit has yet been done. Now repeat this process for the rest of all the modules of your system and just try to integrate this you are moving towards the higher and higher levels of your system. So next level after the body testing, then student testing, the next is module testing, next is integration testing, apart from the integration testing, next is system testing and acceptance testing. This is the details what we have discussed so far. Is it clear? Basic idea about the levels of testing.